tonight. Well, just one week ago, there was talk that Democratic nominee for Governor Andrew Cuomo would not attend tonight's Empire State Pride Agenda dinner, which would actually have been a slight to the politically powerful LGBT community. In the end, however, he actually did show up for a short time tonight, and one of the people who was on hand for his appearance is my next guest. He is a Staten Island Assemblyman, Matt Chatone. He's joining us tonight from New York City. Assemblyman, how are you? I'm very well, Liz. How are you tonight? I'm well. Thanks for being with us. So Andrew Cuomo was well received, and what exactly did he say? Well, uh, Andrew was very well received, and it was really nice to have uh, finally our, our governor, a potential governor, come out for the LGBT community. But we have to remember, Andrew's had a very, very strong history of uh, protecting the rights of L the LGBT community and continues to take that stand. And one of the best things, the finest moments, I think, is when uh, he actually said to the crowd that, look, I don't want to be the governor that proposes marriage equality. I don't want to be the governor that introduces the law onto the Senate or the Assembly floor. But I want to be the governor who signs that uh, bill into law. And that was very well received. Okay, but this is a community that really has heard that before. I mean, they have been there with Andrew, with uh, sorry, with Elliot Spitzer. They have been there with David Patterson, and then they had been there with various different legislative leaders and saw these dreams not realized. So, what has changed that they would believe Andrew Cuomo and not believe someone else? Well, uh, first of all, we heard it loud and clear from Andrew himself that he is committed to our cause. And second of all, we've heard from uh, uh, his opponent, Carl Palladino, many times his opposition as well as his name calling and, and his rhetoric of uh, ignorance and fear against the LGBT community. So what's different is that uh, we have a candidate, our Democratic candidate, who not only stood up for us but uh, in the past, but is uh, reaffirming his commitment to the community. Do you think, though, that actually the Palladino situation with uh, the, the anti-gay comments that he made in Brooklyn actually did Andrew Cuomo a favor? Because at one point there were members of the gay community who were not, who felt that perhaps he hadn't been there enough. He hadn't made the calls he should have made during the marriage debate, and maybe he hadn't been as loud as he should have been in support of your issues. Well, I, I don't think that's entirely accurate, Liz, because let's, let's face it, Andrew was there when uh, defending uh, uh, same-sex marriages which were performed out of state, having them uh, be valid in the state. And Andrew does have a history, you know, as the HUD commissioner uh, in the past uh, fighting for LGBT rights. Um, with respect to Palladino, uh, let's face it, I think it's official. His campaign is a train wreck. We can say it safely now. And, and the man basically, I'm sorry to say, uh, 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 maybe it's uh, difficult to say, but he has political Tourette's and it's just one more group that he's offended and offended in a really big way. But let's be let's be honest, he was never gonna get the gay vote. I mean you never would have voted for Carol Palladino. Not only are you a Democrat, but you just you don't agree with him on any of the issues at all. I mean he, he never was gonna get your vote. Well, well, that's the thing, is he keeps going. It's like as if he has this imaginary checklist of who do I need to offend. Well, let's see, I've offended the minority community. I've offended uh, poor people in our state. I've offended the gay community now. I've offended women with my uh, uh, obnoxious uh, position on uh, choice. So it's as if he has this imaginary checklist that he's going through, and, and the gays were just next on the list. And who's next? In terms of the ESPA event, how was the turnout? Were there a lot of people there? I mean, this is a big, big event for this organization. It should raise sure. up, uh, upwards of a million dollars for them. And what was the, what was the crowd like? Absolutely. It, it, was, it was a packed house, as always. And once again, I, I want to uh, let you know that I was only there for the cocktail hour, and I do have to be elsewhere uh, this evening. But it was a packed house, <laughs> and everyone seemed to be, despite the rainy weather, everyone was in really good spirits. And there is a very true uh, um, sense of optimism. And particularly, you know, having those reaffirming words from uh, uh, Andrew Cuomo, at this particular time for the LGBT community, whereas we're, we have young kids as young as 13 killing themselves, uh, um, uh, the gay bashings that are going on, the most horrific uh, uh, hate, hate crime that I, I'm aware of in, out in the Bronx very recently. So in lieu of all of this, I think it's very uh, uh, positive and it's a good thing for uh, Andrew to come out to the gay community to extend his hands. And I think that's one of the reasons why he did. He saw that this was this has been a difficult uh, several weeks for the community and I think it was important for him to be there and he did the right thing being there. Well Assemblyman, that was my cue to let you go, right? So I will definitely do so. <laughs> I really want to thank you for joining us on this evening. Thanks very much, Matt Titone. My pleasure, Liz. My pleasure.